Yo, you live with Let's Talk Battle Rap Podcast today. I'm your host, Bad Money, along with my partner, Tim. And we had to talk about Zazda vs. Chase Banks, the David and Goliath matchup that just happened this past Sunday. How you feeling, Tim? I'm feeling good, man. I'm excited to be doing a recapable. Um, I'm excited to be doing a disaster battle for my first recapable. That's, uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, disaster is one of those guys that uh, I kind of got me into battle rap. When I first started, I, I just went through that disaster, you know, rabbit hole. So he's, he's got a, he's got a special place for me, man. He's a, he's one of those guys that, you know, I'm always kind of rooting for no matter what he does. Definitely. Um, disaster is another person that, um, got me into battle rap as well. Okay. You know, um, his battle with No Can't Do is like one of my favorite mm, battles. Mm-hmm. Like, I still can go back and watch that battle today and just be thoroughly entertained anytime mm. I look at it. So, yeah, you know what I mean? You know, I always root for disaster, kind of like you just said. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because he's so talented, you know what I mean, at what mm-hmm. he does. Disaster obviously picked Chase Banks because, you know, he's a short guy. He did good. I mean, he did, he did good with the material because he's one of the guys who – changes his inflection. He changes his, the volume of his voice. He, he's entertaining to watch. He's, uh, I, I don't think a lot of battlers would have made this battle even watchable. You know, they would have had some funny lines, and that would have just kind of been it. Um, so shout out to Disaster for, uh, for being a legend and, uh, and, and having the skill set to pull something like this off. Definitely, and having, you know, the business acumen to, you know, put his own pay-per-view on. You know, he didn't know charge nobody up like yeah they had a reasonable right. price mm-hmm. you know um i like the background um one thing i liked about yeah. the battle is how it from like day to night it was like you know late in the day or whatnot but mm-hmm. it was dope and i mean for the rooftop scenery and then you know it's sunny outside one minute and then the next minute they're battling and it's dark outside so right yeah, that was dope you, you want to start with round one and how do, how do you think he did round one disaster comes out like uh Look, y'all, it's this midget Mac kid. He's back with a mini Mac. This time he had a fitted cap with a spinner cap. And <laughs> back. Like, it's off the rip. The thing about yeah. this ass is, like, when you got an opponent that has something that's, like, obvious to identify with mm-hmm. in the crowd, or, like, an obvious angle he could take with an opponent, like, he does really, really well. Yeah. So he came right in, you know what I mean, with the mm-hmm. jokes. So he was going to come with from the beginning. Um, he was like a little fucking twerk. It's all originally visually established. This battle is a handicap and a disadvantage. Not for him, for me. It's already hard enough being Arabic, but now I got to stand here next to this suspicious-looking little package. So, Dude, that was an incredible line by him. That that may be my favorite part of, of that whole round. And, and his first round was really strong. But that line was great. That whole misdirection was really clever. All right. Um, does that have another line where he was like, "Yo, you, your former life is less evolved when you stand and walk up right. It looks like me when I pretend to crawl. <laughs> you put the Webster and Webster hole. <laughs> like, <laughs> right, he like this was cooking. Going in there. He was, man. And you know what? I felt kind of bad, man. I don't know what you thought during the battle, but I kind of felt like the crowd wasn't really giving them that much reaction. Because uh, I thought Disaster was killing it this first time. I thought, like, every line was, was, was hitting. And, uh, you know, the, the crowd was fucking with it a little bit. But, I don't know. I, I think I would have been wilding out had I been there. I don't know. Maybe they didn't want to, like, seem like they were too biased for Disaster. Yeah. They definitely, like, wanted to show Chase some love because, you know, he's out there on the West Coast. You know, it's this Disaster's pay-per-view, you know. So, he's right. already looked at as being, you know, at a disadvantage already. You know what I mean? Because... Yeah. Everything plays into disaster's hands. So maybe he told everybody, like, you're at the mind shit, but don't go too crazy because, right. you know, I don't want to make him uncomfortable or, like, not confident in his shit. Because right. when uh, Champion was talking about the battle, I see disaster tweet them, and he was like, um, I love, you know, how y'all covered it and everything, but I think y'all are really, like, underrating this guy. Like, he's, he's really dope, you know what I mean? So I think disaster really wanted him to get his just due, you know, with this battle. That was one of the things that, that I noticed um, was that he actually, like, you can see him as Chase starts rapping. You can see this after, like, smiling. Like, he, he wants Chase to do good. Exactly. You know what I mean? And it wasn't like he was being super friendly like a right. lot of guys are in between battles. You know what I mean? But 
he was more so like respectful, you know what I mean, acknowledging his yeah. bars and stuff like that. Like like you said, like he wanted him to do good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um he done not rely on he was like uh he was a booster seat by the bar when you see the right. dude hanging, right. his shoes swanking, kicks it in the air, calls it Luke hanging. He said, uh, <laughs> your posture is preposterous. It's hard for the doctors to measure the distance between your head, your neck, and the esophagus because your legs are also a part of it. Oh, my God. It was crazy. Oh, yeah, man. The multis he was throwing in is incredible. It's incredible. This is what I'm saying. Like, when he got um, an obvious angle that he can take mm-hmm. his opponent, like, disaster will flip the shit out of that, that angle, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. or whatever approach it is because he's got so much that he can write about. This, this, when disaster has these type of battles, and his type of opponents or whatever, just when he's at his best. Yeah. Because it's like he doesn't get, like, bored with his rhyming, right? You know, or, like, lazy with his rhyming, so to speak, you know, because he just doesn't run out of material at the end of the day. So yeah. this is like the first round was just endless, endless material. He told right. him he was the smallest pimp he's ever seen walking down Willy Wonka Strip. Uh, <laughs> this is what it looked like. You bought a bootleg Charlie Clip starter yes. kit. Oh my god, that was great. <laughs> that was great. And, 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 and Chase, I mean, there is some Charlie Clips resemblance there, man. He 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 is a, a real small version of him, you know. <laughs> I didn't even peep it into the second round. You know what I mean? I'm looking at yeah. it like, no, nah, this dude do look like little right. clips. Right, right. You know what yeah. I mean? I, I'm yeah. seeing people tweet like, yo, uh, little clips ain't doing that bad. Like when the battle was going on, like I wasn't able to watch it the day of. You know what I mean? I watched it uh, Monday. When I got a chance to sit down and watch it, I was like, all right, I'm glad it was a dope battle. You know what I mean? On mm-hmm. on both sides. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it wasn't one sided. So I think this has to pretty much um, accomplish this mission with this. But we'll get into that later. Um, let's start off with Chase first round. Um, yeah. Talking about, you know, I done fucked your wife. Cause she told me you was an amateur. Mm-hmm. He's the first time I surprised her. Y'all asked me how, and he had crowd like how. He's like, I ate a pussy standing up. You know what I mean? So at this point, I'm like, okay. So he knows how to go in there and combat the short jokes, and this is what I wanted to see with him um, throughout this round. Because you know what I mean? It's labeled as David versus Goliath. Right. You know, this ass just coming in there with the short jokes. So. Set up that body armor around you, like man, that shit is bulletproof because I'm going to embrace the short jokes and talk about, you know what I mean, how I can do something better than you because I'm short. I agree with you 100, percent and that's actually like the angle that I was hoping Chase would be taking actually more of. Um, and, right. And so I was I was excited because he started the battle with, you know what they say, God's made us all equal. I grew, but I grew not to like tall people. So I was like, okay, good. So we're going to get disaster clowning him on his, on his height. And I want to chase to come back and be like, you know what? Being short's not so bad. Being tall sucks. Kind of right. have a back and forth that way. And I, I don't feel like Chase had, had enough of that, man. He, yeah, I he think kinda, that would have like carried him throughout the battle. Like if he had more of that. And then when you open up with something of that nature, you know what I mean? Something that powerful you know, within this battle, because you know what your opponent is going to take. And, I mean, you know, like, what their angle of attack is going to be. So, like you said, it should have been more of that yeah. throughout the whole battle. Absolutely. It looked a little bit better for him. Chase still did good. He had a uh, – we all know he's good with numbers because he hit that math problem real quick. I'm right. still to sort of George Foreman, punch. I'm a grill shit. I'm back strapped. What's in the backpack? It's a D and S K and like we back in school. Um Yeah. No regrets. I I was taking this. You battled DNA Rock Cassie and got the audacity to call yourself a vet. How was that when you keep letting them animals live? You know what I mean? That was a, that was a really dope line. You know, the thing with him though is is I felt like I've heard some of these lines before or, or variations of them. So like I came to tear shit up, Kevin Bacon in the lab. Because he's going to get hit with this hollow, man. This body's going to be clear as fuck. I feel like I've, I've I've heard hollow man, you know, clear body lines before. But you know what? To Chase's credit, I mean, he's going in there against disaster, and he he doesn't have anywhere near the experience. So it was going to be hard to to make this battle look um, look real even. But but he he did his thing with some lines, man. Definitely, he had a um. Think Fortnite, uh, when the storm coming, mm-hmm. 
even when you run back to your circle, you ain't safe. Like, that was dope. Like, Chase was that up was, there far. You that understand my, what I'm saying? That was my favorite line of his, I think, on the entire battle. I thought that was a really dope line. Chase had a lot of dope shit in the first, you know what I mean? But his uh, yeah. first was, like, shorter than Disasters. It was, and Disasters, man. like, had more in his first to go yeah. from. And it's like, that, Disaster, like, took different approaches. I mean, well, not necessarily different approaches, but he used different styles. You know, yeah. within the folks. You right. understand what I'm saying? So it was like yeah. you never knew what to expect. But some of Chase's bars, like in his first, you kind of like knew what might come next. Right. But not saying the lines wasn't dope or nothing like that. They were. But some lines, you know, you knew they were coming next or whatnot. Right. You knew what to expect already. So, like, in the first, I'm going with disaster. That's a clear win uh, on that first for disaster. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But, you know, now he's got two more rounds, and I'm starting to wonder, like, right before he starts the second, I'm starting to wonder, like, is he going to do short jokes again? And, and of course, he does. Again, I mean, he's he's great for being able to change his flow, his inflection. In fact, he's animated. He's an entertainer. So he can – it's more than just his short jokes. Because if he were to just do four bars, set up, punchline. I think disaster was a little bit more entertaining than first yeah. round. Second round, I think – um. Chase Banks definitely, like, started stepping up, you know what I mean? His entertainment and, like, his bars within the second round. Um, disaster comes out in the second round. Like, he – I don't even know what he fucking told me. It didn't even make sense. There's no surprise right. once again a fucking midget reaching for shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right, right, right. Disaster had a lot more uh, uh, short jokes that were hilarious. You got this um, – you, you've been renowned. You got that Charlie Clips syndrome down. Yo, pay attention. I just said you look like Charlie Clips with Down syndrome just switched around. Switched like around. That. Oh, my God. That's amazing uh, shit. Uh, you got to, uh, you're going to, you know, say that, say that, boy. You got to um, talk about what came out there. He said, yo, I love midget chicks. Always oh, let them get the pound. So they're the only bitches on earth that literally let me dick them down. <laughs> right. <laughs> like the way he structured uh, that whole thing, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it, it was dope, you know what I mean? You, you know what? Chase could not stop laughing at, at, at that one. He tried to be stone faced through that whole round, but even he was laughing at, at that line. He could not help himself. That was a dope one. <laughs> It seems like this was happening to be battling him. Like, you just yeah. told him, like, for taking this battle, you're not the man, man. You're the man, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel like sometimes uh, disaster got uh, went a little bit too hard, you know, like talking about him not really actually being considered a real person. Like this shit where he's like, according to orthopedics, you're not even classified as mankind. You're an unknown species. This is what Morgan Freeman would look like if he was an aborted fetus. Like those lines are incredible, but man, you just you just gotta cringe a little yeah, bit, man. Yeah. You're like, oh, this is like, how are you is thinking this of this too shit? Far? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like he definitely, definitely was going in with the short jokes, man. He said, "Uh, you got no arms and legs. You look like Pac Man. So basically, right. basically, you half man." Well, that's just it. <laughs> right. you just half man. Right. Yo, I, I can honestly say this. You can start up a group like 3-6 Mafia, the shit's genius. The group is like 3-6 Mafia, except everybody in the Mafia would be three foot six. <laughs> you know, just this disaster was smiling the entire time he was writing this, you know? He was, he, he was, he had a lot of fun. It was good to see him, like, like having fun with that. Definitely. You know what I mean? He's, he, Went on with the Charlie Clips thing. They right. called him an old guess what womb I'm in looking at. <laughs> Not what room I'm in, what a womb I'm in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, it was good. Like, the Vastor's having fun in this battle. You know what I mean? Right. The longer the battle goes on, like, the more fun you see the Vastor have. You see it and relax. And as a Vastor fan, one of the things that I started not liking about disaster. I never stopped being a fan. Like just right. like you said in the beginning, like we always gonna root for him for how long we've been watching him and how talented he is. But he didn't seem like he was having fun in his battles for a while. You know what I mean? And right. when you when he's having fun in a battle is when he does his best. Right. Agreed, man. Absolutely. So I mean, 
Yeah, the ass has turned up again, like in the second round. You know, with more, more short jokes, but mm-hmm. just effective. I mean, it's a disaster. What do you want him to rap about if he has an opponent, you know, that writes something of this nature that you know he can use as an angle? What do you mm-hmm. want him to rap about? You don't want to sit exactly. up there. You you know he can rap, you know what I mean, and his opponent can rap, but you definitely do want to hit a short jokes, regardless right. of how many he does, how overused you know they might be mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. against you know against this guy every time he battles somebody. But you battling disasters is what you want to see him do, you know, because right. he specializes in the disrespectful shit, mm-hmm. the multi celebrity shit. So um, good thing around the mm-hmm. um, yeah. Chase comes in uh, in the second round. Um, and I'm not your average man. I'm a Pakistan, and I'm bringing loud stuff. He be acting wild tough. If I catch him in broad daylight in his loud truck and feed him this tech for all that foul stuff. He he did have some good bars, man. There there were just like there were some things that I just felt I I had already heard before. I fed dog. I'm a different type of pedigree. Like those sort of things where I'm like, no, oh, okay, I've like heard that. But you know what? There's like there's like some things that he said, talk that short shit. I never kid. You'll get a body part shit to everybody in your family. It'll be a disaster it's everywhere. A disaster everywhere. Right? Mm. And so, like, like to me, I was like, that's a dope concept. But there was, like, something missing. And, and I feel like Chase couldn't quite, like, bring it all together to, to, to make that hit as hard as it could. Like, that could have been that whole idea of, of shipping disasters, body parts to different parts of the world. Uh, was really dope. I just felt like he could have executed it, it, it better. But again, I mean, we're comparing him to a guy who's who's done a hundred battles. It's an uphill climb for sure, for sure. Uh, th- then he says, "However this pan out, you're getting you're getting baked with a biscuit." So there, you know, so there's some good shit there. I can hear him now <laughs> rapping like a machine gun, typical biz shit. So there, there there was some lines that that I definitely did like. I felt like he. I felt like he ended the round kind of short. I'm not. I'm not sure if he thought the same thing, but his round didn't really seem short. But it just kind of ended in a weird way, where I felt like maybe he forgot his last few bars or something. Right. You know what I mean. Um, and that makes this round look a little bit lopsided because yeah. he didn't finish off that strong. He definitely had some bars in there, you know, in his second round. But it, like you said, there were some things that I heard before. But he also said some things like that we've heard before in different ways that I did mm-hmm. like. The third round, um, the Zappa goes, I know you're proud where you're from, but you remember what happened to the last motherfucker who came down here and told me he was from Brooklyn. <laughs> Which was such a great line, man. That was such a great line. <laughs> Dude, I, I actually really like his next line. Yo, you know what's better than one midget? Another one that comes with it. Like, that was just a little line that was funny, man. They got everyone rolling, you know? That was that was great. That was great. Then he had a, um, you ain't got the juice, so even if you turn into Tupac, you still a bitch up and wouldn't let an arm go off this rooftop. I'm handing yep. out vaccinations. You should get your whole crew a flu shot. Mm-hmm. Fuck Chase Banks. I keep my stash in a shoebox. Yeah. Now that I think about it, that was the only name flip that he right. had on Chase Banks. Yeah. Yeah, thing. looking at everything. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. But yeah, so so he's got some Benjamin Button lines, you know. He's got it, it, dude. At one point, I actually thought he was he was gonna choke. Yeah, did too. Because he's like, I'm here to help you grow. When I resort to Chinese torture methods, and then goes in this whole big long, you know, multi-syllable string, and it was it was really dope. Uh, and I, and right. I think he I think he ended it really strong. You know what it was? Um, he said that um, at the end of the battle. Um, he said that when he's excited about a battle, he writes all the way up to the battle. And what happened was in his third, um, he had wrote some extra stuff. So he said a lot of stuff that we heard in the third wasn't even supposed to be in there, but he had wrote like some extra stuff, just like throwaway stuff just he could just weave in and out of that necessarily wasn't in right. like his battle format. When you rap and like stuff just pops into your head. Probably at that moment, you know, Whatever he had thought of that was just like the extra stuff, like I can go jump in this bag at any given time, that probably popped into his head at that time when he was supposed to, you know, finish off the stanza that he had before yeah. that. And he said, God made you, he fucked up, 
He was really trying to record a snippet. <laughs> yeah, that was Life is life. too short, so live it. You know, you have a larger cause besides stuffing chocolate bars with golden tickets. <laughs> <laughs> he must be a Mormon midget because he came all the way to my front door to pay me a shorter visit than a Jehovah's Witness. Man, disaster. Can, I mean, he had a ton of shit. Right. It's like people can say what they want about disaster and the multi celebic flow that he uses or whatnot, but that's just effective. It's rapping. Like, it doesn't, right. everything does not have to be a punchline. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. And when it comes yeah. to, Putting words together, like, with the multi-syllabic shit that a lot of people don't understand why, like, it's so dope and, like, so creative is that you're rhyming, like, sentences. Like, you're rhyming, like, one sentence with another sentence. And at times, like, you're rhyming two and three sentences where it's still, like, you got about six words in each sentence or more. You're putting it all together and everything right. rhymes. So you can line it up on paper and say, all right, this word rhymes with this word. In the, in the first sentence, in the right. second sentence, in the third sentence. So that's what I'd be liking about when disaster gets in these type of bags. This is the funniest part to me in the third round. He said, um, he knows this is not his purpose. He belongs in the circus because he's a professional rope hopper. Give him $4 and walk on a tightrope and bounce a bike on his nose with a girl on top and he won't drop her. He's going to finish it off with one note. With one of those signature flips in midair, that shit right there is a showstopper. <laughs> I don't want to be laughing when I'm reading these bars, man, but it's just like I'm picturing a battle, like running it back, you know, and just remembering how how crazy this stuff is. Just yeah. even just visualizing it as, you know, I'm reading this stuff off the page or whatnot. It's just funny to even just think about, you know what I mean? Somebody's saying this to their, their opponent. The fact that he's comparing him to saying funny shit about him and also correlating it with, like, this person should be, like, in a circus. You know, it's also super disrespectful. I mean, it's like, it's it's what makes disaster disaster. What did you think about Chase's third? Uh, Chase's third, I think Chase's third was his best round of the battle. Mm. Actually, um, to me, um, he said, um, your career is like the names that ran into the twin tower, which you put your life on the line just to blow up and die. See, y'all know his thoughts. He wanted to battle me because I was short. I wanted to battle him for a bunch of reasons. I'm fucking seasoned. Not your punch your fucking knees in. See, this is right. the shit that we that were talking about great. in the beginning. Like, if he had yeah. much more of that, like, yes. it would have been like, it would have been better for him. You understand what I'm saying? Chase did not do bad in his battle. He said, um, I left Fresh Prince on Will Pops. He was there as soon as the deal dropped, and then retired for trying to be a shining star in September. He gonna hit. He gonna hit Earth when it fire. I know y'all agree because you name just David versus Goliath. So like, I'm becoming a fan of Chase. Like I said, as right. I'm watching this, like I've seen him battle before. I seen him in the two on two against um, yeah Twerk, New Castro, no in New Jersey Twerk. You know what I mean? So I thought he was decent then. You know what I mean? But yeah. I'm a couple of fan of him. More so from watching this battle because I mean, it's two on two. It's like the All Star game. You know what I mean? It's like pick up right. basketball. And that's what um, that's why it was such a great look for him. Even though I think it's pretty clear that he lost his battle, uh, he still got so much exposure. And people like like yourself who who see him and are like, you know what? I want to check out his, his next battle. I mean, for him, that's that's a win. You know, for for any Definitely. battler who's like coming up to to have a battle against a legend. Um, you're going to get a lot of exposure that you normally wouldn't. So props to him for 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 taking it. So definitely, like um, I got disaster taking every round clear. Yeah. Um, I don't yeah. think Chase Banks loses anything. Right. You know necessarily. Um, his stock does go up for the simple yeah. fact that um, he just battled a legend. You know what I mean? How right. many people in line want to battle disaster? Sharon's won the battle disaster for how long? forever you want to put up 60k for it too man i mean there's like battled all over the world not just right. all over america or just been battling in america canada and then the uk no like the has mm-hmm. been to probably every damn continent <laughs> i mean yeah yeah battle you know what i mean so it definitely like helps give him a boost you know what i mean it's just a couple things i want chase to work on which is like um he's got the structure down as far as like you know how to, you know, structure around or whatnot. But I just want to see him, like, more so put some type of performance in his bars. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, Don't overdo yeah. it. More so just bring your bars to life. 
You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And just more so structure your writing in a way where as though you put a lot of strong stuff behind some of your strongest lyrics. You got to back that up. Like, all right, that was strong. Let me give you something strong here. Strong there, strong there, strong there. You know what I mean? So that way it's not like necessarily a, a drop off before you hear like another um, bar that's like the quality that you've given us, you know, of bars that we like. And, you know, like I said, a couple outdated bars here and there, stuff yeah. that we've heard. He said stuff the disaster that um, we expected from a lot of say disaster, the same way disaster did with him. You right. understand what I'm saying? But yeah. he went up there and, and he fought. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he had a. Yeah. He had a pretty good fight. I was entertained by it. I definitely ch- chased out again. Um, disaster pretty much stays where he's at. You know what I mean? I think, yeah. Um, yeah. if anything, this raises his stock as a businessman. Right. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think as far as battles go, um, yeah, this this kind of – we got what we expected from Disaster. You know, he was entertained. But um, the fact that he, he ran his own event, I mean, that's – that's got to help, and he's only going to get better at it the more often he does it. So I can see him eventually, you know, retiring from from battle rap uh, as an actual performer and just doing his own lead. I could have disaster going into acting and shit oh, like yeah. that. Yeah, like yeah, absolutely, definitely being like some fast and furious type shit is yeah. a film, <laughs> or like you know, what I mean, a character one of these Marvel comics or something. Right. Whatever. Um, I just feel like, you know what I mean, I think as far as, like, the business aspect, you know, and being more in control of his career, I think last year and this year we start seeing disaster show more of that and care more about that and know, like, hey, man, like, I got to take more control of my career and put it into my hands as opposed to, you know, just battling. You know, he's starting to understand things that people like Hollow and Mook and Lux, you know, have, you know, come to understand throughout the years of battling. Right, right. And maybe it's, it maybe it's not that he didn't you know this stuff before, just maybe he had no way of more so being on top of everything. You know what I mean? I definitely want to see Disaster do more stuff like this. He can actually go to a league now and be like, boom, I bought this much money in on my own. One battle on a pay-per-view, you know what I mean? So he didn't yeah. pay me. X amount of dollars. Exactly. He knows exactly how much he's worth. You know, whereas every other battle rapper can say, you know, I think I'm worth this much. I think I'll bring in this many tickets, sell this many pay-per-views. Disaster can can pretty much say it definitively. Because, yeah. uh, I, I mean, by, by battling a guy who's not very well known at all, you can just assume that pretty much every ticket sold was for Disaster. Exactly. Yeah, man. Uh, what, what, what do you think the bar of the battle was? What do I think the bar of the battle was? That whole circus bar where he was talking about uh, the balance, the girl on uh, on a tricycle on his nose. Yeah. I, it was. <laughs> I, I had to open my notes back up and, and say it again. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I got to give it to the um, to the whole scheme where he ends it saying, you look like Morgan Freeman as an aborted fetus. Like, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that that that's just crazy, man. He's crazy. I want to see if he's going to do this again. I'm, I'm real interested yeah. in seeing if he's going to do this again, and is he going to take on another lesser known person? Is he right. going to get a mid tier? Is he going to get a top tier? Like, I want to see him do it again. Period. Yeah, and like do it more than you know this time and then the next time he does it. It doesn't yeah. have to be for every disaster battle, but. This could be his thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of fun having him like basically in like a one-off, and, and and just seeing him kind of pick a topic and just go crazy with it, you know? Um, exactly. Yeah, I, I I would definitely pay to to see this again. Definitely, and like it looked like the people that were there were like genuinely enjoying themselves. Avocado mm-hmm. couldn't stop smiling, mm-hmm. you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like everybody mm-hmm. there seemed like they were enjoying themselves, chasing like, you know what I mean? Despite being focused for the battle, he was enjoying themselves. Like you said, like he couldn't stop laughing at some of the disaster bars. Right, right, right. You understand what I'm saying? And yeah. battle rap does not have to be so angry and negative all the right. time. Sometimes I want to look in the crowd and see people enjoy themselves. I don't want to see People always with their face balled up. Leave that to the battle right. rap. Let's yeah. be angry. You know what I mean? Right. That's one thing that 
we got to learn about battle rap is that sometimes you just got to have fun. You know yeah, what I mean? And yeah. sometimes as fans, we got to loosen up and be a little bit more accepting of things and I be a little that. bit more open to change. And this is part of bringing forth change. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and that that is disaster. I mean, he's always trying to do something that no one else has done. And this is just a, this is just another example of that, man. So, so shout out to him for, uh, for creating a new lane. Exactly. Well, we're going to see if anybody follows up behind us. I'll be real curious. Let's see if that happens. Let's talk about how you transcribe these lyrics so fast. For those of y'all that are um, listening and might not know who Tim is, Tim is from uh, Genius.com, is also a member of Let's Talk Battle Rap Podcast, as y'all know. Tim wrote these lyrics down and put them up on the site within, like, what, like 24 hours? Yeah. Maybe yeah. Time than that. Yeah. 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 I, I want to say it was 24 hours. For me, there are – there. it all started with – there are just certain battles that are classic that just hadn't been transcribed. It 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 just doesn't sit right with me. How are you going to have a classic battle and people are going to be misquoting it and you know trying to remember certain bars but they can't and and it's just it's really nice to have something to go back to and, and just say right. no this is what he said uh, or, or to go back and be like no someone already said that and you know here's the proof you, you know there's you can go back and look at the lyrics for this battle. Yeah, it's just kind of like battle rap history, man. I feel like um, battle rappers are the best lyricists in any sort of genre. Man, someone's someone's got to document it, I guess. Definitely, man. Uh, myself and everyone else, you know, um, that that you know tunes in. We appreciate you. You yeah, know, for what you man, because it's not easy, you know, to sit down no. and put the time and the effort in that you do to put these lyrics down. You don't just do this for just battle rap. You know what I mean? You do this for music, too. So the effort and time that you put in, man, I appreciate that because not a lot of people have the patience to do this, man. So shout out to you on that. Definitely made my job a lot easier for this. Right, right. right. (laughs) Well, Bad Money, man, thanks so much for doing this. This is fun, man. This is great. We we definitely got to do this again. 100%, man. Tell let them know where to uh, find you at, man. I'm on Twitter. Don't tweet much is my, is my name. Or on uh, you can hit me up on uh, Gmail if you got any questions. Uh, I'm Tim Nelson 14 at Gmail, and then um, on Genius, I'm Tim Nelson 14 on uh, Genius.com. Uh, what about you, Bad Money? I'm Bad Money 29 on Twitter. Working on my YouTube page. Um, I do do some blogging here and there, but. Working on my YouTube page and uh, right. changing the name that I had to wait a little bit of time, which is why anybody that tunes in that um has watched the blogs don't have that big of a following at all. But um if you notice I slowed up with the blogs, that is why because I had to wait some time, you know, before I could change my page on um my, my YouTube page name again. So I'll be back in effect with that very, very soon. Um aside from that, man, tune in to Let's Talk Battle Rap. You know, um find me here, you find Tim here. You can find Dylan, you can find French, you can find Program V. We're out here trying to bring something different to the culture and get staying surrounded by positivity, man, and trying to lift fellow brothers in the culture up that are doing great things. So Yeah. That money, thanks so much, man, and uh, we'll do this again. For sure, man. Uh, it's been another episode of Let's Talk Battle Rap, Bad Money. Tim, we are out of here. Peace. Peace.